science normally when this word is uttered gives shiver to many people and uh, I think the reason is the way it is taught to generations after generations, the way our education system has imposed science on children and now the parents have started imposing science on children. Therefore, the science word itself has become something like a demon for the younger generation. However, science has in its modern form has uh, been the most important agent of change in any society. Though science tries to define everything that we see around or when we interact with nature in very, very highly precise language. Yet, the experts, the philosophers, sociologists and policy makers have never been able to arrive at a universal definition of science. Now, let me go back to uh, a little bit of history, though I am not an expert in the area of. In my opinion, when man started interacting with nature in a conscious manner, he was still living in caves and he had very limited uh, needs. Now, with these needs, he required very limited understanding of nature. Now, once you start interacting with the nature around and you start transforming the nature and environment around you, then you start asking simple questions and seek answers to those questions. Some of the answers are complex, but if I try to categorize broadly the questions that humanity has been asking since the early days, since the prehistory days, then I would categorize them in two broad classes. One, where the meta question begins with how, how things happen, how things work, how can I understand. The other set of questions that human beings would have asked and are still asking begin with why things happen and why I am there, why I am born, why there is a society, etc., etc. These are the two broad categories in which most of the questions could be that humanity has asked up till now could be put. Having said that, when you ask a question that begins with why, in my opinion that leads you to dead ends. But when you ask a question that begins with why, with how, then the set of answers that you get are very, very different. And these answers lead you to further questions. And when you come across the dead end, that is the boundary of your knowledge, then you say that maybe today I am unable to answer this question, tomorrow somebody else will crack the problem and will generate more hows, more questions that begin with how. When you ask a question that begins with how, then the answers that you are seeking are also a function of the material reality that you have around and the capability to probe the questions that you have posed. When the human beings were living, still living in caves, then the needs of communication, the needs of survival were very, very limited you did not expect them to develop a complex language. When your need is to go and hunt or gather, then or protect yourself against the animals, then you do not require a very complex uh, communication system. After it is transformed, the society is transformed 
into agrarian society, then that opens up huge possibilities of development of society. And the number of questions that you can ask now or you need to ask now are very different in nature and the number is very, very large. You need to ask the question as to how the seasons change, when the floods come, how does a soil react to uh, uh, agricultural activity. Once you have started building a complex society, then the need for communication also becomes more complex. This is where you start counting and therefore all primitive societies where take Babylonia or uh, Mesopotamia or Indus Valley, the counting system, the primitive counting system takes birth because the exchange measurements etc. are extremely important. Now, each time you are asking a question that begins with how. How do I construct a house? How do I measure? How do I count? How do I fix the value of one product to be exchanged with something very different that is being produced by someone else? So, these questions when asked lead to exploration of new vistas of knowledge. And once you start recording the data that you are accumulating, then there is also a need to pass on this data to the next generation. Because in previous society, there was no need to pass on the data or complex data accumulated knowledge to the next generation. In this society, it is become imperative to accumulate data over generations, come to conclusions, find certain answers and then pass it on to the next generation for both. One, to use so that the new generation can use this data and also build upon this repository of data. And this is the period when certain observatories are constructed by human beings all over the world. This is the period when the exchange starts happening or the exchange, uh, the, the people start migrating and coming back to where they are settled. Uh, and these are the exchanges between two far off places. Maybe Mesopotamia civilization is interacting with whatever is happening in what we know as India today and they have to go back. So, in earlier society, you did not have to travel far off distances. Now, there is a problem as to how I record it and how I find my direction back to my home. Somebody must have observed the stars and once you start observing these stars, then you also come to know that maybe the earth is not flat. As to how this happens, that at the same time, Venus or some, something is seen in Mesopotamia at a different position and in India, it is seen at a different position. The clock is there, you can observe that at 5 o'clock, the position of Venus in the evening on a particular day is at an angle. And this angle at the same time on the same day in India is very, very different. And this is how you come to a conclusion that maybe the earth's surface is not flat. In previous society, you did not pose that question as to how the angle of a star rising on the same day is different. But here is a situation now, when you are observing and Venus is very, very important for you to guide to a destination. Therefore, you 
pose the question and seek the answer and a new knowledge is created. Now, once this question is asked, then the whole notion of earth itself, the notion of how do you relate as human beings to the nature and mother earth completely changes. And the old system or the old um, model of earth that you have built is crumbled down. However, the science progresses, you have new instruments to look at the cosmos and in Italy somebody gives birth to telescopes and there is this notorious again person who turns it to sky. Once it is turned to sky, then for the first time he observes that there are other heavenly bodies around which there are moons revolving. Now that is first experimental observation which threatens the old model and the old model crumbles down again. New model comes into being. This is the only system where you celebrate when the old model crumbles down, when the new data comes in. Whereas, in stagnant frozen knowledge systems, anything that is new becomes a threat. Anything that is new, data, model or whatever becomes blasphemous. It is considered as blasphemy. I will pick up some examples from Indian science. In science, when you have new data, at times this new data leads to new concepts or models of explanation of a reality. Now, this model over a period of time is if it is able to satisfy or fit in the data that is being generated in the society by experts or non-experts. If it is able to explain the reality, then it is accepted as science. It becomes part of the larger body of science. If it is unable to explain, then it is rejected. Therefore, I am talking about the scientific method. Now, the scientific method essentially for me is a set of filters that science or scientific methodology offers to any new data, any new model, any new explanation of reality that is being offered by individuals or the community of scientists. We can be proud as, as proud as one could be as Indians because we contributed to human knowledge systems a huge amount of data, notions, concepts and models, uh, especially in the field of mathematics. But we did not restrict ourselves to field of mathematics. We also contributed to the technology that we know today as a big repository of human knowledge. One can go on listing the iron, the cotton, and, and, the, and the weaving and uh, all kinds of areas, including shipbuilding at later stages. We mastered that. Uh, we mastered making colors. We brewed finest wine. Uh, we did all kinds of things here. But when other societies accepted things from us, they always put a filter. When we accepted certain things and scientific knowledge and usable knowledge, we did put filters, but other societies also put filters. Let us pick up one example. We had Shun philosophical notion and we had Bindu as zero. Now, when Arabs came here, Al-Baruni was referred to, when they came here, they learned from us 
they put the filters, they did not accept our whole philosophy of Shunya and the discourse around it and a very elaborate in fact discourse, very verbose discourse about Shunya. But they did accept Bindu, zero as a concept and a mathematical entity was accepted. They picked up our number system, they picked up our whatever algebra we had done by that time. They also took trigonometry from here, learnt, came, learnt and then improved upon it. But they had their own philosophical system, they had their own uh, religion, they did not accept a religion. Therefore, what I am arguing is that scientific information, scientific notions and science as a body of knowledge is highly secular. This is the only body of knowledge that is secular. Why should anybody accept non-science of yours because they have accepted that kind of religion, philosophy, God or whatever because they think that they are superior in that particular area. But the whole notion and thinking of being superior or inferior breaks down when you enter into the arena of scientific inquiry. Now, anybody would accept from India or India would accept anything when it is carpet weaving. We were very good at weaving, we did the finest muslin in eastern part of India and very old one. When we had to learn from Iranians carpet weaving, we did learn from them. They came here, they influenced Kashmiri carpet weaving and they went back and till today we have tremendous influence of Iranian patterns and the method of carpet weaving. Similarly, in the area of iron, iron smelting, we learned from others, from China, from Egypt, from all other places, developed iron smelting, made tremendous in fact leap. Uh, in making alloys and gave it back to the world, contributed to the big reservoir of human knowledge. Therefore, what one is trying to say is that scientific knowledge is the knowledge which is highly secular. Similarly, the technology that you generate in any part of the world is highly secular, but there are always filters which one society, one culture while adopting a technology or science developed in other parts of the world accepts it, transforms it, makes it better probably in certain cases and gives it back to the world. We have accepted all kinds of technologies since the British came, but did not accept their system of governance. We stood against it, we fought, we struggled against that, but we did accept the railways, we did accept the postal system, we did accept the scientific education, the textbooks that were being developed science textbooks especially that were being developed in Europe were translated by Indians and these were uh, traditional Indians. Most of them were very, very traditional Indians. They translated lots of books because these books, this knowledge was not available within the uh, Indian system. We had no difficulty in accepting this knowledge. Yet, the system, the old notions uh, 
of, of our culture, our religion, etc., etc., always offered barrier to the free flow of the knowledge that is being generated elsewhere. Even uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, who, who was a founder of one of the earliest scientific societies, did not initially accept the idea that Earth is not in the center of, of the universe and it's not static. And then he goes to, to Europe, tries to understand that as to how this new model has come about, what are the arguments. He comes back and he had the courage to say that my understanding was wrong and this is the correct understanding. Therefore, the knowledge that was coming from Europe did get accepted in our society. We accepted computer as soon as it came. We mastered computer technology in the past 20 years and has, we have improved that technology and given back to the world. Similarly, uh, science is egalitarian, but over a period of time there have been very serious efforts to contain this knowledge in a small pockets. When Americans and Soviet Union both refused to give uh, nuclear technology to the world because it was kept very close to uh, their breasts, yet people developed that knowledge. Therefore, this knowledge, in my opinion, even if nations try very, very seriously to contain this knowledge or make them secret, this knowledge, which is scientific, cannot be contained within the boundaries of the nation. In the arena of scientific inquiry, whatever is accepted by the experts and whatever is, has filtered down after crossing the barriers that scientific method puts becomes part of the whole humanity. And that is probably our most secular heritage. That we should try to enlarge the area that is secular in people's cultural thought structure and reduce the area which is irrational. Thank you.